Well, as I said, um, Deacon uh, Luther Jump was uh, great uh, to have him. He's a co-worker, actually. He works at First Baptist Church of Glenarden. They're in our now facilities department. Uh, he's also a, as I said, deacon with our church. He's a facilitator for our bid, which is Brothers and Discipleship Ministry, uh, which is a great ministry because it raises up men to be men of God, trains them in righteousness. And then he's also part of the prison ministry. Now I know why we connected. <laughs> you know, I was a prison chaplain for 21 years, almost 22 years. So Amen. <laughs> we, we connect, praise Amen. God. But um, we want to let you share whatever God has put on your heart, my dear brother. Okay, all right, Reverend Lenny, again, thanks for having me, uh, part of your ministry, and, and uh, thank you for the great work you're doing around the world, and uh, thank you for having me on, and I really look forward to to sharing. Before I share, I just want to pray. Uh, sure. dear, uh, dear Father, we just ask that you will uh, open the hearts, minds, and spirits of those that are listening, dear Father. Use me, dear Father, to uh, let your will be done as I share today, dear Father. We just bless your name, these things we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, folks, I just want to give a quick little uh, background on myself. I was uh, born in Baltimore, Maryland. I uh, went to Baltimore City Public Schools, graduated uh, from Morgan State University. I, I got a younger sister, and luckily uh, I grew up uh, in, in, a, in a dual parent home. Uh, so I both my parents around in working class neighborhood. Uh, as I stated, I went to school, I went to the ROTC program, which is, some people, folks don't know, it's a military uh, a preparation. So I went into the military as a army officer. Uh, I got saved early on, I should say, as a 12, 13 years old in my great grandfather's church. Great grandfather found the church in Baltimore. I got saved there, and as as a lot of teenagers do, I kind of lost my way uh, at you know teenager age years, and also throughout college. And one of the reasons why was that uh, I saw Christianity as a white man's religion, mm -hmm. and that kind of uh, uh, held me back from really embracing it. Also seeing uh, hypocrites uh, in, in church as well. And as I got more mature now, I can see some other things that have a different eyesight on that. But the biggest thing that, that changed my mind was an uh, uh, event that happened when I was in the military. And one thing a lot of veterans know, we got Veterans Day coming up this week, but a lot of veterans know is one thing you don't do in military is volunteer. You never volunteer for anything. <laughs> You might volunteer to go someplace to help someone out for a couple hours, and three days later, you come back. So you never volunteer for anything. So in this case, I did volunteer. We got some brothers coming in from Africa doing some training that we were doing, and they needed sponsors to help these gentlemen out. So I volunteered. So I heard they from Africa. Hey, I'm, you know, I might help these brothers out. So I, I got assigned a, 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 a gentleman by the name of Joe. Uh, major by name Joseph, and uh, so I, uh, I part of our responsibility was to give them information about the training, make sure they were able to assimilate, get to where they had to be, that type of thing. So uh, as being foreign students, they had opportunities to go on field trips to kind of see the country and, and things like that. So one day they missed class, so I had to go and give him an update on what happened that day, what he had to be prepared for the next day, so forth and so on. So I went to his room and I flicked out my cigarette, Drank the rest of my beer and knocked on his door and said, Hey, Joe, this is what's going on for tomorrow. This is what you missed today. And the first thing he asked me was, Are you a Christian? Uh, uh, yes, I'm a Christian, but I'm, I, I fell away. I'm not practicing the way I should. He said, Okay, he opened his Bible up, slapped it down, and started witnessing to me. And I'm like, Wow, the, the word just jumped off the pages and, and just, I was convicted. At that point, I rededicated my life to Christ. Uh, and from that point on, I never drank again. Uh, and, and God really, really convicted me. Uh, and from there, I uh, want to use some here uh, to kind of go over my paradigm right now, as far as my walk with Christ now, uh, of how I see things at my current maturity level. It's something called an operation order, something we use in the military to describe how we do operation. There's five parts to this uh, operation order. The first part is, is called a situation. And I'm going to throw some of my uh, uh, testimony in it along the way. So first off, the situation was kind of gives us the environment that we're in. And uh, Ephesians 6.12 gives us our environment. It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts and wickedness in heavenly places. So it's not flesh and blood we're fighting against. 
uh, folks, it is spiritual warfare. So that's our situation. All right. Now, going to our mission. Now, mission. The Great Commission gives us our mission. Matthew 28, 19 tells us, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's our mission. All right. Now, we get to the execution. This is the meat and the potatoes here. It, it, it details how we are to fight. And Ephesians 6, 13 through 17 tells us that. And I'm just going to cover the highlights of that. So first it tells us to gird up our waist uh, with truth, pulling on a breastplate of righteousness. Put the gospel of truth on our feet. Use the shield of faith and also use our offensive weapon, which is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. All right. And that's the execution, how we will go forth and fight. Next, we have the service support. That's the next paragraph. This is the logistical support. How, what they will be aid us or help us uh, on this mission. And here we got the local church. Uh, Hebrews 10, 25. We have love from fellow Christians, John 13, 34, 35. We also have some scriptures that we can hold on to that will help support us as we go through it. One of my favorite is Romans 8, 28, uh, which says, and we know that all things work together uh, for those, for good to those who love God, those who call according to his purpose. And one example here I want to show, share the testimony I had where I was uh, uh, took a corporate job where uh, it was an organization that did not have anyone in that position for two or three months, and the organization was in bad shape. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I uh, felt in my spirit after two or three months there that they were trying to make me the fall guy for this operation. Uh, and I prayed about it, and I, I kept praying about it, and the spirit was leading me to just just do what the right thing, keep doing things you had to do to turn this place around. Just kept working on that, kept working on that. And they're still a couple months later, I go, man, something not. They're trying to set me up. Prayer about it. God answered my prayers. Uh, I got a, a visit from the vice president of this company. I came to the building one day out of the blue. I said, Luther, I just want to let you know that I did a reorganization of the whole organization, whole division. And there used to be a region headquarters in your facility. It's no longer here. That leadership that was here. Do not, you do not report to them anymore. <laughs> so God answered my prayer. He said, I, I see the work you're doing. Continue going to good work. And, uh, and, and wow, I, I, God asked for prayer. He showed up big there. So that, that was awesome. So that's, again, uh, how we, that support. So we got to pray there. And, and that, that pray definitely uh, showed up big there. Uh, next is the final paragraph is the command and signal. This is how uh, it gives us the chain of command. It also gives how we communicate throughout the whole operation. So our chain of command is in Luke 9, 23. It tells us uh, that if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. So who are we following? We're following the Lord. So that's our chain of command. All right. Now, how do we communicate? This is where I really want to get to here. It's prayer. <laughs> you know, prayer, that's how we communicate to God and how he communicates back to us through that uh, experience, through his word and through uh, the Holy Spirit. So why did we pray? And we look back through scripture, Jesus prayed. <laughs> Jesus prayed. <laughs> Who am I not to pray? He communicates with Father through prayer. We have to do the same thing. That's why we pray. But also we pray to know the will of God. And John 15, 7 tells us, if we abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. So if we're in God's will and we're praying, if we're in his will, we're going to pray the things we ought to pray. Because we're in his will. And that's why we need to stand his word, stand his will. Now, when do we pray? Uh, first Thessalonians 5, 17 says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. So another uh, example here. Uh, after I was, I was out of the military for about 10 years, I opened the mail and had military orders. said, Luther Jones, report to this location on this day. Because you are going to be going to uh, the war. So a good soldier, I'm like, okay, fine, I'll go. But I called the number and I said, look, I, I thought I fulfilled my obligation. Uh, no, you did not. You, I, I, I fulfilled my obligation. No, you did not. Prove it. No, you did not. Okay, fine, I'm a good soldier, I'm going to go. Uh, I got to the point where I had, uh, on my job, I put in my notice, and I had to, uh, told him I was leaving, he said, gave, gave me a farewell party, everything. I'm a week out from going. A Saturday afternoon, 
I got a FedEx package. This is 15, 20 years ago. I got a FedEx package in the mail on Saturday afternoon. It didn't happen. Opened it up. said, uh, Major Jones, you do not have to report. You're correct. You did meet your obligations. If you don't know where to go, you can do X, Y, and Z. Uh, because my, my wife just had some surgery. My daughter was in, this, in high school. So, and I wasn't agreed with the political climate and what the reasons. I said, hey, okay, I'm going to go ahead and, and God, thank you. Answer my prayers. <laughs> Answer my prayers. You know, side note, I came to uh, a prayer service on Wednesday on our, at our church, on our church on Wednesday. It's a senior prayer. Those mothers prayed for me. <laughs> it might be, I think, the next Saturday is when I got that letter. So uh, they, the prayer prayer works. So that was just, just awesome. So we pray without ceasing. All right. Next thing, uh, our prayer. Uh, Ephesians 6, 18 through 20 tells us we should pray in the spirit. There's two ways we pray in the spirit. We pray in the spirit by using uh, the word of God when we pray. Pray his word. And also the other thing is to pray uh, with a prayer language. And, and uh, that is emphasized in, in Romans 8, uh, 26, where it says, likewise, the spirit also helps in our weakness, for we do not know that we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. And also, uh, and the next thing, we should pray for our spiritual leaders. Uh, in Ephesians 6 19, Paul uh, told the Ephesians, Hey, look, y'all pray for me. And he said in, uh, uh, in, in verse 19, he says, Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador to change, pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. And I think the New King James said, boldly uh, proclaim the word of Christ. Uh, so uh, those are key things. So our, our leaders, our pastors, our spiritual uh, uh, organization leaders, uh, Reverend Carr, uh, with her, her ministry here, we need to pray for them because uh, they're under attack and we need to pray to keep them lifted up. Uh, so as I close, us, remember that we're not in a physical battle. We're in a spiritual warfare. We must put on the armor of God, stay in the communication with our Lord through prayer. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. That is such a powerful testimony. And I thank you for sharing that, as well as reminding us that our battle is not with flesh and blood. Amen. But look how many times God showed up as you cried out to him and he showed up each time. So that inspires us to keep on praying, saints. And I want to open the prayer line now so that we can do just what the better God said. Let's pray. Amen, amen. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name right now in the name of Jesus. We come, oh God, acknowledging that we need you, almighty King. We come, God, laying every burden at your feet. First, we say thank you, God, for what you've already done. You've kept us night after night after night, day after day after day, through day, danger, seen and unseen heard our cries when we got situations going on in our lives. You have seen yourself over and over and over again. God, we come lifting up, first and foremost, our leadership, God. We lift up Pastor Jenkins, and we lift up the leaders across the land, not just in the United States, but all across the globe, God, who name the name of Jesus, who go out in faith to teach your word, to preach your word, who help your flock, who lead, God. We ask you to bless them and guide them and keep them and cover them by the precious blood of Jesus. Give them wisdom and direction to know what you would have them to do, oh God. We lift up every leader in the body of Christ. We cry out for the body of Christ, God, that you continue to drive out the schisms and isms and division amongst us, that you bring us on one accord, that God love would abound from breast to breast and heart to heart. God, forgive us where we've been the hypocrites for all this coming to know Christ, where we've been the hypocrites, where we've been the backsliders, but we've been the unfaithful God. Forgive us, O King, and help us to get it right. Help us to live righteously in a way that is pleasing unto you. Let us help us lift up the name of Jesus that others will come asking, what must I do to be saved? Oh God, use us as instruments of righteousness. We offer ourselves all over again as instruments of righteousness, Lord God. And we renounce our, all the deeds, all the works of the flesh in the name of Jesus. God, we come lifting up our political leadership. We lift up 
President elect Joseph Biden, and we uh, Vice President elect Kamala Harris, Lord God, that your will be done in their lives, that you cover them, that you keep them, that you draw them close to you, God, that they will walk according to your will, that they will be godly examples for little girls and little boys to look up to, for men and women to follow, God, that you would touch their hearts, God, drive out the unrighteousness from amongst them, that you would use them as your spokespeople, your mouthpieces in this season. We cry out for unity in our nation, oh God. Drive out the devil in every facet of his deceit and lies. God, we bind the spirit of deception, trying to keep even uh, confusion amongst us. Father, that you would make justice prevail, that truth would be made known. And God, I pray that you will move in such a way that we can have a peaceful transition from one president to the other. We plead the blood of Jesus over Donald Trump today, over Mike Pence and every other Republican, uh, senator, congressman, local representative, and devoted member, oh God, that you would have your way in each of their hearts as well as our hearts, that we would be on one accord, that we would indeed be a united state, oh God, that the world would not look to us and see division, but see division, oh God, is my cry. God, that your will be done. I pray that Jesus over this globe, God, over every leader, Putin and every leader across the globe, God, yes, the chancellors, the prime ministers, the, the dictators even, God, I plead the blood of Jesus over their hearts, that their hearts will be turned towards you, almighty King. I plead the blood of Jesus for your body all over the world. People who are suffering under repressive regimes, oh God, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would bring about deliverance and freedom, oh God, for people to be able to live in a wholesome way without being repressed and oppressed and depressed, oh God, and abused. In the name of Jesus, I cry out against the abuse throughout the land, God, not only in these United States, but across every state, across every nation, God, that freedom would bring from house to house, oh God, freedom would bring from nation to nation, oh God. That you would make provision, Father, for your people. That there would be no lack. God, we cry out for uh, peace uh, in Nigeria today. Peace uh, in China today. Peace in North Korea today. God, that uh, your will be done. In the name of Jesus, drive out the spirit of murder and genocide uh, that flows through uh, nations uh, these days. Taking out Christians and taking out others who don't have the same political view. Uh, God, that you would bring peace to the hearts and minds of people across this world. God, we cry out for those who are sick today, those who are going uh, through uh, difficulties, can't breathe well. We cry out for Margaret Butler's mom. Touch her lungs, God. Breathe in her and let the very ruin of life flow through her and keep her strong. We lift Robin Welly's mom, God, breathe on her lungs today, God. Breathe on her body. Drive out any vestige of blood, blood, or any of that will cause sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. We cry for Amelia's mom in Finland today, God. Bring peace to her soul. Let her draw near to you. We burn the spirit that would try to cause her to do self-harm. We command the spirit of suicide to leave the name God, you have given us life. You said whom the sun set free is free indeed. We cry out, oh God, for Samuel and Nathaniel today, God, that you cover them by your precious blood. We bind every attack of the enemy. We count on every assignment against them. God, we decree that no weapon formed against them will prosper in Jesus' name. God, that you would use them as a beacon and a light. We cry out for Carlos, God. Draw him by your spirit. Call him into your kingdom. Carlos, oh God, let him be not only a man of God, but a man of virtue, a man who walks according to your precepts, that lives a life that's pleasing in your sight. We bind it and ask you to quench his thirst and his yearning and hunger for drugs, God, that you would cause it to be so that he is, is repulsed by them. He would no longer desire them, God. Any person who is connected to us, God, we cry out for all those who are bound by addiction, by drugs, by alcoholism, by any other addiction, God, workaholism, any other addiction. We cry out, God, that you would set the captives free, that you would break those grips, that you would destroy the work of the enemy in their lives. Oh, God, in our lives, even when we have things that are out of alignment with your will, 
move, we pray in a miraculous way. We plead the blood of Jesus over the hospital beds and ICUs across the land, God, that have been filling up, God. We continue to bless and strengthen every caregiver, every medical professional, God, as they are struggling to keep pace with all these cases of COVID-19 and other diseases. God, would you breathe on those hospitals and breathe on those medical professionals, oh God, each and every one, no matter what, from the orderly God all the way to the surgeon, covered them by the precious blood of Jesus. Drive out, oh God, what is coming up against them and bless them and keep them and protect them. Cover every EMT, cover every caregiver, nurse, doctor, uh, epidemiologist, every researcher, every person that's seeking to get a resolution to this crisis, God. Give them wisdom, Father. Give them direction. We pray for the team that you're using to uh, develop a, a strategy for our nation, even as you have given our new president-elect wisdom and guidance. Lord, give him the right team. Show him the right people to put in place that we will be able to turn this thing around according to the wisdom that you have given us, oh God. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over the land. We ask you to forgive us our transgressions. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us our hypocrisies. Forgive us our backsmitten ways. Oh God, give us pastors and shepherds after your own heart. Forgive us when we have been shepherds that have been gone astray and when we have led the sheep astray. Forgive us, God, when we have walked in divisiveness and Racism, oh God, forgive us, oh God, when we have not loved one another as you told us to. Forgive us when we have been the hindrance to others coming to you. Oh God, have mercy on your people's soul, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we know you're well able. We know there's nothing too hard for you. We know, God, that you can turn it around in the precious and matchless name of Jesus Christ. We bless you and thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 As our Father, dear Father, we acknowledge you, dear Lord. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, dear Father. We come today, dear Father. Thank you for Reverend Lady's ministry, dear Father. We pray for her ministry, dear Father. Continue to bless it, dear Father. Continue to have it reach every part of this globe that you desire to meet, dear Father. Let those that hear her messages, dear Father, hear her program, dear Father, let their hearts be open to it, dear Father. Let that be good ground, dear Father, good soil, dear Father, for their lives to be changed, dear Father, that will go forth, dear Lord, and will be make disciples for you, dear Father. Go across this land, dear Father, and continue to touch lives, dear Father, and just be fruitful in, in every aspect of this ministry, dear Father. Dear Lord, we pray for everyone listening, dear Father. You will put a hedge of protection around them, dear Father, from this COVID-19, dear Father, from any other harm or danger that might be in their path, dear Father. Let them, those that are weak in their faith, dear Father, be strengthened uh, by your word, dear Father, by something that a Christian says that's in their path or someone that a Christian does in their path, dear Father. Let them see that, observe that, dear Father, and be able to want to desire to strengthen their walk with you, dear Father. Those that do not know you, dear Father, let them uh, come to know you, dear Lord. Those that are backslidden, dear Father, have them come back to you, dear Lord. Have someone uh, be an example for them, dear Father, so they can come back to you, dear Father, do the will that you have for them to do. Dear Lord, we pray that you will continue to those that uh, need a church home, dear Father. Let them find one. Dear Lord, let them be a integral part of a house of God, which they can help that pastor, that minister, dear Lord, to grow that church, to touch lives in their local community, dear Father. Let them understand, dear Father, that we do not fight against flesh and blood, dear Father. It's a spiritual warfare, dear Lord. So every day we go out and fight, go out and fight. Use the word of God to fight, dear Father. Pray in faith, dear Lord, to fight. Dear Father, we just bless your name. We pray for this entire world. We pray for our country, dear Father. We go through a transition, dear Father. Let it be peaceful, dear Lord. And let your peace and the calm that only you can bring to come and guide our new president-elect and vice president-elect, dear Father, as they continue to 
uh, move forward and make plans to lead this country, dear Father. Let the unity come, their desire to come. You know, we know that this country was built on a foundation of your word, dear Father. Let that foundation be true and let any falseness come into it, dear Father. Let your word be true, dear Father. Let the true Christian leaders, dear Father, come forth and help guide our leaders uh, to uh, lead and govern this country, dear Father. We pray for uh, those that are suffering with this COVID-19, dear Lord, that you will uh, give them health, dear Father. We know that your word said that by your strength we are healed, dear Father. So we call them healed today, dear Father. We pray for the acceleration of the uh, all of the medical uh, aids that will keep us uh, from uh, uh, vaccinations, dear Father. Come forward. Let those tests and those different procedures to develop and those uh, be done rapidly and be done safely, dear Father. And let the plan to rapidly uh, distribute those be made and be done in an excellent fashion so when the time comes, it's able to be distributed, distributed safely and timely so we can uh, eradicate this uh, disease, dear Father, and move forward with our lives and go forward to give you glory and all we do, dear Father. Dear Lord, again, we thank you for the time we spent today, dear Father. We pray for everyone here, and we just give you all glory, honor, and praise. We ask these things in the mighty Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> praise God for that powerful prayer and testimony. Amen. Uh, amen. The beautiful thing that he has shared is, is a really a great blueprint for how we walk with God. Just like every time he encountered a challenge, he cried out to God and God heard his cry. When you give your heart to Christ, you can do the same thing and know that God will answer you. What we know the word of God says is his ears are attentive to the prayers of the righteous. And the righteous is not those who are perfect, but it's those who are in Christ, who are in relationship with the God, the Father, through his son, Jesus Christ. So when you want to have a relationship that you can be confident in and know that God will hear your prayers, you start by first praying a prayer to ask Jesus to come into your life. And that's what we want you to do today. That's what we're inviting you to do today, in fact. If you want to accept Jesus as your Savior, have that connection, have that rich prayer life, and know that God will answer you. It all starts with Jesus. Mm -hmm. I want to implore you today, give your heart to Christ so that you can know what it's like to really be blessed and walk with our God. Mm -hmm. If you would like to do that, I'm going to lead you in a prayer that you can pray and then know that God will answer. If you've backslidden, meaning like, like Luther, he said he gave his life to Christ, young person. I did the same. Then get out there. We start thinking we grown, smelling mm -hmm. ourselves, as the old folks would say. <laughs> but God so merciful that he'll receive you right back as mm -hmm. soon as you turn your heart back to him. Mm -hmm. And so if you're backslidden, you've gotten out of step with God, you never accepted Jesus as your Savior, or you're not sure, you're not quite sure if you do have a relationship, I invite you to pray this prayer with me, repeat these words, and do this with a sincere heart, and God will save you. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died for every one of my sins. I believe you were buried and God has raised you from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus. Take control. I repent. I'm turning to you. Thank you for dying for my sins, Lord. Thank you for saving my soul. Amen. And amen and amen. Amen, amen. The amen. beautiful thing about that is if you prayed that prayer today, you are a child of God. Today, amen. God will answer your prayers and do a work in your life. I celebrate what you've done. I know the angels in heaven are celebrating because that's what amen. the world tells us. I want you to write the date out as your spiritual birthday because God is pleased. And we want to encourage you to reach out to somebody in the body of Christ. I'm sure there's somebody in your family, your friends, somebody's been praying for you. Let them know you said yes to the Lord today. And I would love for you to reach out to me. You can email me at Rev Letty Carr, R E V L E T T I E C A R R, Rev Letty Carr at Whosoever Believes. I would love to hear what God has done in your life. 
give if you're giving your life to Christ or he's answered a prayer because it always blesses us to get testimonies. The word of God says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. Amen. So we want to praise God for that powerful testimony. He just blew us away. Uh, <laughs> it was our strategic plan. That's awesome. Amen. Amen. Praise That's God. Awesome. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Definitely a blessing. Thank you.